Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'll be talking about handling complex contract cases with the ZA, my financial disclosures. So let's start out with a simple case. This is a soft posterior polar cataract and you can see we've already done eight segments and a capsulotomy of 5 mm. And we're just putting dispersive viscoelastic under the capsule in the subincisional areas and cracking along the crevices without any sculpting. And then joining all these cracks, the sweeping movement at the equatorial region and this loosens up the entire segment and we can just aspirate this up with the femtosecond with the uh, FACO machine because this is really quite a soft cataract. Now, this sub incisional area is a little more difficult. That's why you've got viscoelastic under there to loosen up the nuclear fragment. And just picking off the fragments, they come easily towards the center. So we have removed the nucleus without any uh, effect at all and you can see there's been no rotation so the posterior plate is still intact there's been a cushion that protects the posterior capsule in case this thin posterior capsule gives way and you can see this is just a 500 micron thick cortex that's been created by the femtosecond laser cut and we're just aspirating this off from the periphery towards the center slowly in case posterior capsule this way. And you can see there's a little bit of a plug there, but that's what the patient started off with. So I'm going to remove this. I've just punctured the posterior capsule with a 27 gauge needle and performing a posterior capsule rexis to clear this plug off the visual axis. And after this, we can still implant the lens inside the capsular bag and the patient will have good vision the very, very next day and does not have to wait for a yet capsulotomy because the anterior vitreous space is intact. It's not a problem going under the intraocular lens to clear all the viscoelastic. We won't engage any vitreous and then we tap the lens into position and we can get a very good outcome with this. Now let's have a look at the next case. It's a little more challenging. This is a white on brown cataract and you can see the fibrosis under the capsule. This is tough, right? And it's not something that you can easily tear or do a manual capsulorexis. So we've got the femtosecond laser set to 150% of energy and that's to treat this uh, capsule with a fibrosis. Sometimes the strands that are really tenacious and you might just have to cut across this fibrosis, but you will notice that the capsulotomy was completely cut and free. So also with the very dense nucleus, we want about 150% of energy so that we can segment this and this has uh, been segmented again into eight pieces. You can do 16 pieces with the uh, Z8, which will make a denser cataract even easier to remove. And because these lines that you see here are really clean, you know this has been cleaved by the laser. So we just apply standard settings for this kind of a uh, cataract that's not super dense and we'll be able to remove this very uh, quickly and very safely. And we have a nice well-centered capsulotomy to implant our lens through. So you can see now the lens in place and the viscoelastic has been removed and we have a good outcome for this patient with a very advanced cataract. Now this is a patient with a rather tight papural aperture which is not uncommon amongst Asians, uh, Orientals especially. Pupil is also small so we've inserted a malugin ring and this has been done under dispersive uh, cohesive viscoelastic and has been removed. And because the palpable aperture is so tight, sometimes we cannot center this nicely. And so having the suture there actually helps us to position the, our eye right in the center of the patient interface so that we can perform the perfect capsulotomy and docking. So this is another complicated case. As you can see, we had to expand the pupil. We put in vision blue so that we can ensure that the capsulotomy has been completely cut in a white on brown cataract again. And I thought, well, this is not too bad. It's a bit denser than the previous case we're doing, but it's been cut well right to the posterior capsule. But as I was doing, I noticed that the ring, Malugin ring kept moving to one side. And then I realized that the bag was actually rather loose. And so I'm going to put in capsule bag hooks to support the capsular bag. 
and I'm going to recenter this ring so that I can proceed my surgery. And you see here, actually, what had happened was one of the scrolls had caught onto this ring, and I was actually pushing it many times to try to center it without knowing what had happened. And yet, the femtorexes actually stood up to all this manual manhandling by the scroll. Okay, so it's a strong capsulotomy, and you can see now that we can proceed with this Malukian ring centered on the capsulotomy and with the hooks actually supporting the equator, everything seems to be very going on very nicely and I'm uh, progressively removing the nuclear fragments one piece by one piece and slowly it's coming and, and, then, and then something happens. Okay, you will see that this ring again is moving to one side and I'm not comfortable because I think something has happened now and indeed actually uh, there's some fluid gone from the anterior chamber to the retrolendal space and is pushing my capsule forward. So I put an RL as a scaffold so I can safely complete my surgery. I take out the hooks and I thought I'm done. But as I pull out the Malugan ring as it falls, there's some vitreous that's just coming here. And so I know because of the zonulysis, I have to clear this vitreous completely so that the patient will have no retinal issues and I'm going for the past planar approach to clear this vitreous after staining it with trimicillone acetonide and clearing whatever strands that I had seen here and I'm going to fixate this capsular bag using a capsular tension segment with a proline 6O suture which has been something that Tana Brava has described in the recent years. I just pull this out through the main incision so I'm using 6O proline I load on the capsule tension segment and insert this into the capsular bag with the help of micrograspers into this location where the vitreous was seen popping forwards. And once I've removed all this uh, viscoelastic, I then adjust tension of the suture, which I then create a flange and this is the case that's now stable and the lens is well centered. So in conclusion, the Z8 femtosecond laser is a low energy enabling technology where complex cataract cases are made safer and also appearing, appearing far less difficult to the surgeon than what I had to face years ago. The Z8 has recently obtained CE mark for treating pediatric cataracts and coming up soon also, the company has for us a new smaller patient interface, especially for Asian eyes. And also the best news is the new software that will halve the current nucleotomy times. So please visit the Zima virtual booth today for more information. Thank you very much for your attention.